Kyle from All Media Reviews here on a Saturday. Um, do the more vinyl A to Z. We're getting slowly but surely getting through um, everything with those. I only have, well, now less than three sacks after this video. Um, so I'm going to do the cues. And this is a pretty big set. I'm just going to have to kind of go by era or something. I don't know. So there's only two artists I've got. I've only got two artists in the queues, <laughs> so pretty obvious on a lot of people, a lot of collections. So Queen, the debut album, of course, which I think, I think this might be a reissue. I can't remember. I remember when I was looking for them. Although, wow, there's definitely a little damage here. Unfortunately, it was more on the case, but you can see that. Um, anyway, this has um, a number of good tracks. The thing, the song I think of the most for it. Is uh, keep yourself alive. That was the that was the first that's the first song. Um, let's see here, Seven Seas of Rye, the first part of that, the first version. The G Great King Rat, uh, Liar. There's a couple others, but they were very to me. They always sounded very Led Zeppelin like, you know, with different kind of singer, but especially Brian May's style. So then I have I don't know what pressing this is of Queen Two, but it's not. Uh, I don't think it's an original, but it's not a new pressing. Of course, the track list you can see is upside down. Um, of course, the the video for later for Bohemian Rhapsody. There's there's the, you can read the track list. This is the same kind of picture they use, but um, this has one of my one of my favorite Queen songs, um, March of the Black Queen. That is Prague. All in <laughs> debate it. Um, the dynamics and the sort of the, the sections of it. Freddie's performance alone is just fantastic in that. But um, Father to Son, White Queen as it began, Ogre Battles, another favorite. And then it's got the more full, like, proper version of Seven Seas of Rye. But um, yeah, so March of the Black Queen would be on second side. It's interesting, one side's white and one side's black. Because <laughs> there's the White Queen and the Black Queen. I don't know if there was like an Alice in Wonderland thing when they did this. I mean, when they took the name Queen, I mean, of course, you get a lot of connotations, including they're from England. From the UK, and then you have the Queen there. So that was like 70, they might have been, both been 73. Um, but then, yeah, I have Sheer Heart Attack from 74. I think this might be a reissue, more recent pressing. Um, favorites being Stone Cold Crazy, that's arguably metal. I mean, it's, you know, as fast and heavy and riffy as any song of that era, um, 74. Stone, I mean, In the Lap of the Gods. Um, Killer Queen, the obvious sort of radio staple. It's a great track. I've never gotten sick of that song. I love the the vocal, you know, layers and harmonies. You know, they were kind of... Flick of the Wrist is another one, Lily of the Valley. This is a great album. A lot of people, I know people consider this their favorite. This is the most progressive Queen album. I don't know. All those albums where we were doing some element of prog, but a, some element of Zeppelin, too, of course. So then we come to the big magnum opus, or, you know, to me... <laughs> Uh, but, you know, um, Night at the Opera, you know, which has, and it has Bohemian Rhapsody, of course, but uh, I later grew to learn when I finally heard it, because I, I had a lot of people I knew, especially among the Dream Theater fan base, this was in the 90s when I first heard it, um, that were just worshipping this album, and it wasn't for Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> it was for the one track especially, which is still my favorite Queen song, um, uh, the Prophet song. That that and March of the Black Queen are like one A and one B for the the best sort of epic prog, uh, you know, studio trickery Queen tracks. Um, but then this album has so many other songs that are great. And it flows so well between. I still like I'm Your Best Friend. It's even though again it's a radio staple, but I'm in love with my car and um, Death on Two Legs. You know, Dream Theater covered at least one of those um, live when points. Um, 39, which to me always sounded like a like a folk song, like Mo the Moody Blues. That has Brian May on vocals. I always thought Roger, um, not Roger, yeah, Roger Taylor vocally sounded like um, Ian Gillen from Deep Purple. So it's like, yeah, Freddie, and then you have a singer who sounds like the Moody from the Moody Blues, like like Justin Hayward, and you have a singer that sounds like he's from um, Deep Purple. It's weird, but Seaside Rendezvous, I love my life. I love every track on here. You know, it's it's a fantastic record. It. It lives up to the hype, uh, Night at the Opera, of course. You know, I don't know if they took it from the, they took the title like, from the, the Marx Brothers movie, I don't know. 
So then I did buy in Record Store Day many years back um, the 12 inch Bohemian Rhapsody, which has I'm in Love with My Car as a B side. As you can see there. But um, I don't remember if this is colored or not, but I don't know, it's been, been the time. Cause time is of the essence, but yeah, it was great to have. I mean, I, Bohemian Rhapsody, I think I like it. I still like it. I think it lives up, even though I've been overplayed no ever since Wayne's World, even, like before I even heard Man at the Opera. But, you know, it's like. Just below Stairway to Heaven, where it's been played to death, but it, it's been covered to death, but I'm not totally sick of it, unlike some songs. I think Stairway to Heaven, I have slightly more goosebumps, because I, you know, it's like five years before, but I really grew up as a, as a Zeppelin fan, like my first love, and I just, that song alone, I just I get so much nostalgia. I don't quite have the same level of nostalgia for Bohemian Rhapsody, and then I figured out that Prophet's song was a better track anyway. <laughs> but it's still a great track, and it was worth buying the 12-inch, so... All right, so movie and I have a day at the races, the follow up, another Marx Brothers movie. That was that was seventy, uh, you know, Night at the Opera seventy five, Day at the Races seventy six. Um, yeah, most people feel the same way I do in that this, while it's not a bad record, it's not even the same league as Night at the Opera. Um, it has, you know, Tie Your Mother Down. Um, what's the other one that's kind of big deal on this uh, millionaire waltz that's kind of proggy itself um i thought this was the album that had um maybe not i i know i know i remember was thinking i was gonna love this album and i only liked it i mean but i haven't listened to it in full long in a long time good old-fashioned lover lover boy drows um yeah i mean some some deeper tracks for his sort of you know like again the night at the opera a day at the races and the name of a, a marx brothers movie <laughs> So then I have um, News of the World. That was 76. I don't know News of the World is the same year or 77. They were releasing like an album a year. And News of the World, yeah, has their sort of most well-known song, We Will Rock You and We Are the Champions. Which, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody has been played to death. Those two have been played to death and then some. Um, I mean, I, I don't hate them, but it has Sheer Heart Attack, which is interesting. You know, it's interesting. I forget that, that there was a song called Sheer Heart Attack on here. Um... But, yeah, this I know this is kind of iconic. It's almost more iconic um, of an the, the album art than the actual music on it, other than those two songs. But yeah, I mean, even the the, uh, the style, like the, this is like it wraps around, I think the cover art does, but very kind of like iRobot. I don't know if they were like fans of like Asimov or, you know, sci-fi when they wanted to do the artwork for that this album. But it was like 78, 7 or 7, it was like 77, 78. I'll know when I do my albums of the year, of course. You know, I've done them, but I need—I don't have them totally in my mind. So I have the Flash Gordon soundtrack. I've always had a soft spot for this too. I remember it was in the late '90s. I, I discovered that they did—they did the music for this because I had seen Flash Gordon as a kid. I think not the—I don't know if it was the TV show. I think it was just this movie, but I didn't know who Queen was really either. And of course, Queen—I knew Queen did music for Highlander, the TV series, and maybe the movie, the theme, of course. But you know, and then I got this on CD, and then now I have it on vinyl. And I, I've always liked it, even though it is a soundtrack. There's some cheesiness to it, but the the Flash, you know, is very Queen esque. It just it's got that classic Queen, you know, in your face punchy sort of um, motif um, throughout. I mean, it's yeah, it's about half music, half soundtrack, half like bits and stuff, and clips from the movie and stuff. And yeah, I mean, being a kid of the '80s of this era, I still have like sort of nostalgia and a soft spot for this, you know. But yeah, I think this was, it was like 79 or 80. It was toward the end of the decade. No, it was 1980. It was, so. Um, so then I have, of course, The Game, which came out the same year. I don't remember which one came out first, but um, this, of course, has another one, Bites the Dust. They're maybe almost played song, even more than maybe, like, We Will Rock You in some ways. But it's a great track. It's very, the groove, you know, John Deacon's, you know, bass line, stuff like that, which, you know, that whole comparison with, Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, before that was at, um, the riff on it that, that Sheik used for um, uh, Good Times or whatever it's called. Um, but, yeah, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, that which sounds like Elvis. That's probably the other huge hit on this. It's more, I don't know, more electronic, more song-oriented, not as guitar, from my memory of listening to this. But, you know, it's still a decent record from the 80s. That same year, so that you got a soundtrack from them and you got a, a standard studio album. You know, I don't have jazz, although I thought I did, but my wife may have it if I don't have jazz. Um, 
So then I have Kind of Magic, which does have the Highlander theme, I believe. Uh, Princes of the Universe. Um, you know, and I maybe listened to this twice, but um, it's 80s Queen, which, you know, it's more hit and miss than 70s Queen, but it came out in like 83? No, it was 86. Wow. So there's at least one record I'm missing. Well, the album that they put out in the early 80s, I know, wasn't well received. And then Freddie put out a solo album, of course. But, yeah, I mean, it, Prince of the Universe is a terrific track, you know. I have to probably go back and revisit this at some point just to see if I feel any differently than I did when I initially listened to it. But, you know, you always, you always have, like, Highlander come on the TV series. And you always hear the Queen thing. I am immortal. You know, I have the blood of kings. Um... So then the last queen I believe I do have is Innuendo, and I got this for a discounted price. This is the last proper album with Freddie Mercury. Of course, they did one, I believe, before it, and then they put out an album after it. I think they, have, they had two bookends, but this this is a lot of my people I, I know online talk about this as sort of their last calling. It has the song, The Show Must Go On, which ends the record. It has Delilah, which was another kind of uh, song that got on the radio. Um, but it's, it's kind of a mixture of, like, the 80s and 90s. I mean, it came out in 91, yeah. Right when he was dealing with, of course, the the complications of HIV. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, like Kind of Magic. It's an album I know some of, but I don't... I haven't spent tons of time with, but I understand why people revere it in some ways. Um, but, anyway, yeah, I mean, I eventually may have to just try to fill the holes out and get every Queen record. At one point, I was thinking I was going to become, like, this massive Queen fan, because I was, like... Because I love Zeppelin. They reminded me of Zeppelin, but it's like their vocalist was even better. But um, I still love them, so... All right, so on to the other Cube artists, which most people have in their collections that like rock and metal. Queen's Reich, you know. So this is the the debut EP, the self-titled act, which I initially thought was a full length. Has Queen of the Reich, Knight Rider, Lady Wore Black. Some of it reminds me of Black Sabbath, but um, it's a fun record. And I mean, among the early Queensryche, I can't say I would like anything. I like anything more than it, really. Um, it's terrific, you know. My, I had already been into Fate's Warning when I checked them out, and that's the thing. Is so like, I wanted them to sound more like Fate's Warning. This is the album that sounded the most like Fate, the release, Fate's Warning. This came out in I think '83. They're on EMI. Yep, yep. So. So then I have, and I'm going to be showing a bunch of singles, because I got that whole Queen's Right collection, you know, at that place out in Egan many years back for a really cheap price. It was, I paid them like 60 bucks or 70 bucks. But So I have the second album, or the debut, the second release, the debut album, The Warning, which is funny because I love the band The Warning. Um, no, maybe most known for Take Hold of the Flame. That's the, the song they played live. And then NM156, the title track. It's not called The Warning, it's just Warning, I think, yeah. Um, no, it is The Warning, interesting. They have a song called Warning without the the on it, but the actual, you know, uh, album title actually is The Warning, so I don't know if the band The Warning ever <laughs> consider covering Warning. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it's it's kind of like New Wave of British Heavy Metal. It has slight attendance. It's like glam prog metal before prog metal even existed really because you know you, you I, mean, I guess you know you had rush and you had you had black sabbath in a sense and you had um iron maiden and judas priest but this was a little more overtly artistic you know anyway that was 84 yeah yep on emi again emi america um so then i of course i've got Rage for Order, which is a favorite of many fans of the 80s Queen's Reich. I've always liked this album, but I always felt like I would want to like it more. This came out in 86, I believe. Um, my favorites on here? Walk in the Shadows. Um, Surgical, Surgical, Sur Surgical Strike is another one that I was like. Screaming in Digital, I will remember. Um, and of course, it does have... Uh, the, the song they did the video for, Gonna Get Close to You, which is a cover. I forget who it's a cover of. It's another 80s artist, like Susie and the Banshees or someone like that. Um, but um, this is more a product of like the influences of like, new wave, new romantic. It's like taking like hard rock and heavy metal and having those influences. They really were glamming it up. You look at Jeff Tate's picture. I was always thrown off by that, by that picture. And so the, the way the band looked, Michael Wilton, you know, Chris DeGarmo. But, yeah, even, you know, who is this? Uh, Rockenfeld, the drummer, look at him. He looks like he should be in, like, the Lost Boys or something. 
So, anyways, this was 86, so that was before the Lost Boys. So then, of course, I've got... i got to do this, because I'm going to put all the other stuff a second. Copy of the sort of highly influential breakthrough, you know... Some ways, definitive or the first, you know, this if in the core of the Crimson King was the first prog rock or progressive rock album. It's it's not definitive, but in some ways you could say this is sort of the first definitive progressive metal album or at least concept album. You could say because Fate's Warning had released two albums that were doing prog metal before that, anyways. But this this is a very well made, cool, interesting concept album, uh, Operation Mindcrime from 1988. Um, I, I like it. I think it's properly rated for the most part. A little bit like Night at the Opera. I don't find it to be the most like the most definitive album in the in the genre. I, I totally respect its influence, and I think it's not overrated. I just think it um, it has many songs I like, and this is the first thing I heard from them. And I was just sort of lukewarm. It was like when I heard Tales from Tropic After Oceans or The Lamb Lies on Broadway first the first time. I I like parts of it, but I didn't understand why I was gonna love it. But then over time, getting into more of the Queensryche's music, I understood, yeah, there's a lot lot to really take in and, you know, immerse yourself in the story. The go-tos are the, the title, the, the title track, the Eyes of a Stranger. I like the title track. Eyes of a Stranger is the final track, which, it's 639 on here. I thought it was a little longer than that. Um, I Don't Believe in Love, Breaking the Silence. Those are the singles, I believe. And then the first song I actually really like was um, Neil Lies, the Neil Lies. That was when I first heard them, I was like, and I was a Marillion fan, I was thinking, and I remember Jeff Tate remain, reminded me a little bit of Fish. Um, but Revolution Calling, so there's no, yeah, there's Operation Mind. Speak, um, Sweet System Mary, that's the 10 minute epic. I played that on the radio one, uh, one time. You know, the concept of a, of a guy who's kind of, you know, it's a, you know, like an underground a takeover. Um, there's the priest, the priest and the, the, um, the, the nun or whatever, the, the sweet sister Mary and all this stuff, and um, sort of conspiratorial. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know they did the second part, which I didn't bother with. It was poorly received. I never got to see this whole thing live. I saw them once with Jeff Tate. That was in 97 from the Here Now from, no, from Tier Tour, but um, I would go for seeing it live. I can go for seeing a tribute band do it at some point, or someone do a tribute to it live, but Anarchy X, you know, it's... It, it flows really well, you know, this album, and it, again, I think it, it's properly rated. I don't think it's underrated. I don't think it's really that overrated. Only in the context of the Queensryche catalog, I might think it's a little overrated, but um, I haven't grown tired of it, you know. Probably because a lot of those songs, even if they got on the radio, like I Don't Believe in Love and Breaking the Silence, never got overplayed. I mean, on the metal radio, not even there. Not really. So then, of course, in 1990, they put out their most commercially successful record, um... Empire, which does have their most well-known song, which, like Bohemian Rhapsody and Stairway to Heaven, <laughs> uh, you know, the track um, Silent Lucid City, I have not grown tired of. I mean, I want to listen to it every day, but I still am moved by it. I have a ton of nostalgia. I worked at Sam Goody the summer of 93 in the Mall of America, and we played their videos. They had a video collection that came out around that time, and that was always on there, but um, it's like an escapist song. It's like a fetal position song. It's you know, Pink Floyd, you know, like Pink Floyd doing metal, you know, or hard rock, or Pink Floyd for the 90s. But besides Silent Lucidity, which is, again, terrific, um, Another Rain Night is super catchy. I can never get the hook out of my head. The video is funny, and the lyrics are sort of funny, too. My takeout food is growing cold. Um, the candle burned the hole in the floor. Uh, Best I Can is great. Not like the Rush song, but it's... <laughs> I like the Rush song a lot, too, of course. Jet City Woman, eh, I get a little bit of a cheese factor with Jet City Woman, but I don't think people love it. Della Brown, the title track, which is very political, has the samples and stuff, and, you know, talking about government spending and, you know, national defense and, you know, where the money, you know, law enforcement and all this, all this business. Resistance is decent, hand on heart, and then is any, anybody listening, that's an epic. That's them kind of doing prog. And, uh, like, it's, if you could compare this to A Night at Their Opera where you had Bohemian Rhapsody and Prophet Song, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody got the well-known, and Prophet Song is sort of the fan favorite of the real hardcore. Fan favorite is an anybody listening. You know, the, the, the commercial you know hit is Silent the City, of course, but any anybody listening is a great track to close this album out, Empire, from 1990. You know, and they really were getting successful. I mean, I had heard the name, but even the point that I get in, got into them into the mid to late 90s, they were still kind of riding on that. 
Um, they were way more commercially viable than any prog metal or any a lot of metal bands, really. So then they it took many a number of years, and then they eventually did release their, their follow-up. That was '94, Promised Land, which you know I'm not spoiling anything like that. But this is my go-to. This is my number, my favorite record by them. Um, and I mean, it's darker. It's more there's like saxophone in it at times, but it's it's. It's a concept album. I w Empire really wasn't a concept album exactly, but you know, obviously uh, Operation Mindcrime was. This is like their second concept album, and I find it to be. It's not over the top though. It's just it's perfect. The perfect balance of being interesting and engaging, but not you know. I, I don't get kind of you know a little bit overdosed on it. Um, Lady Jane is probably my favorite track. I love. It's a, like a piano ballad. It's kind of gothic sounding. Um, I think of Jane, Lady Jane Eyre or whatever we in history. I don't know if that's about that, but um, the piano arrangement's great in that, you know. And then the oh, the, the second and third tracks, I am I and Damage, are like one-two punches of you know very riffy, very energetic, um, very heavy, you know. And Jeff Tate's vocals, he's like he really sounds dark. He's using like a, a like a, um, a baritone. His baritone ranged really well on those two. Bridge is great. That's a ballad, you know. Disconnected, the title track, which side B starts with Disconnected. My Global Mind is 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 good. It sounds, I guess you could say some of it is influenced by 90s alternative rock, 90s grunge, 90s college rock, whatever you want to call it. It, it has some of that. <laughs> My Global Mind sounds like a song that should have been on MTV playing during, like, what was that show, The Real World or something. But And then Someone Else, which is a sad, sort of depressing song about, you know, someone dying or someone believing that you know they're like the after effect of someone dying um or someone who wishes they were dead i forget the actual uh lyrics i thought i had where that was going but but yeah i, I love this record the the cd of course i mean i got it after it had come out but there was a version of it that came with a computer game like a cd-rom that you played and you get extra tracks but um i never got there i thought i bought it but i wasn't able to use it or something i never was able to do that so so anyway, that's my my proper Queensryche, uh, the proper full length. So then I'm gonna show, which I showed. There's this thing right here. You can see it's blue. I guess I'll pull it out, which came with this. And I have a poster. When I got this big Queensryche collection, I think I also have some seven inches in my my seven inch um, section. But I'll just show the. And I showed these all on a video years back when I got them at that place in Egan. These are 12 inch singles and EPs. So this is breaking the silence. The uh, you know the, the 12 inch single I believe, and and I figured I found out as I mentioned before like on previous videos with these, these aren't rare at all. They're any Queensryche collector has basically all this stuff. So I thought I got a bunch of rare stuff and I didn't. A lot of promotional materials. Now, here's the Silent the City 12 inch, which has the Mission Live and Eyes of a Stranger, eight minute version of Eyes. Of a Stranger. So yeah, six minutes. I thought that's a little short for Eyes of a Stranger. I don't know if my my version on that of Operation Mindcrime. Cuts off. It's like it's like a radio edit of Miser Stranger. I hope not. So here's a picture disc, which again I'll probably never listen to this. Of I think the Song Empire, the title track, and then Scarborough's Fair, Fair, Fair Canticle, which is a Simon and Garfunkel track. And I don't know if this is actually Queen's record or not. Here you can look at that. Cut cut to shade picture disc. I mean again it's a picture disc so. How this sounds is the Simon and Garfield thing is on the on the B side, but I should just check YouTube or look online to see if that's it actually is Queen's right covering Simon and Garfunkel, or is that actually Simon and Garfunkel? I guess it's probably Queen's right covering them. So here's another picture disc. This is Jet City Woman with Empire Live. Um, yeah, I mean again, picture discs. I can see why maybe in some ways someone wants a song because it's like, well, listen, listen to this stuff that they sound they don't sound good, but um, Basically, just artwork. You're, you're collecting artwork for records' sake. So then you have a just a 12-inch, uh, just like whatever. I think this is probably black. Yeah, black vinyl of Jet City Woman single with Empire Live and Walk in the Shadows from um, from uh, Rage for Order. Again, this I don't know what the years on these. They have years on them. 91. Well, this came out in 91, but if those live recordings were previously unreleased, yeah. They have, like, I think they have a live album, at least one or two. They have, like, an Operation Minecraft live. It might be on vinyl, too. Then there's another Jet City Woman. So I've got, like, three Jet City Womans and 12-inch. 
Um, kind of like, because EMI, because it's interesting, you think about it, I never even thought about that. Queensryche was on EMI, the label, for the longest time. When they started, basically. So was Marillion. Well, what do I have for Marillion? I have a ton of 80s Marillion 45 singles, and 12 inches especially, picture discs. Same thing happened with, if they're on EMI, you're getting a ton, of, especially for this period of the, the sort of the empire, the, when they when they're blown up with Silent Lucidity, um, and even another Rainy Night, Empire, and a little bit with Operation Mindcrime, I bet you EMI just put a ton of money into trying to produce as many kinds of singles for DJs and promos and, and collectors. Um, so that's, I guess it's a product of, you know, EMI was very interested in releasing a ton of, um, extra material to promote their artists to try to get the, you know, get it out there and, um, cause you know, the queen, I, the quick, the correct, the connection between Queens, right from Marillion, I don't think too many other people ever make, but so I showed this before. I think this is just a, like a tour book and stuff, but this came with it. I showed this on that, the, um, favorites. Yeah, it is a, it is a single too. So, uh, you know, this would go with it. So, so that's like the third or fourth Jet, Jet City Woman. I mean, as I mentioned, Jet City Woman's a song I, I like, but it's a little cheesy to me. It's not bad, but, um, it's like every woman that like Queensryche. <laughs> Jet City refers to like Seattle. They're from Seattle, but so that's my Queens Rye collection, and those are the Qs. Um, I'll move on to the Rs, the beginning of the Rs, because there's a lot in one particular letter in the Rs. But um, in the next video, I don't know if it's gonna be today. It probably would be coming. This video will probably show up sometime early, probably Monday. So probably Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on. But thank you for watching. If you subscribed recently, thank you for subscribing. But if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time.